Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to compute Pearson correlation coefficient or referred as the R. Okay, let's say that we have a data set of six participants looking at their responses on exper work experience and their job satisfaction. Okay, so in this case we have two variable or two information continuous information from the same individuals so what we are going to do here is we are going to compute the r and test for its significance so what is the formula r is sp divided by the square root of sum of squares x multiplied by sum of squares y so first step is compute the sp what is sp sum of product of deviation so how do we calculate sp? It is the sum of x, y minus sum of x, sum of y divided by n. So how do we get these values? We'll show you in the coming, uh, in the in the next, um, followed by this, this explanation. Okay. So step 3 is, step 2 sorry, is to compute the sum of squares of x. So sum of squares x is sum of x squared minus sum of x square root divided by n. So these sum of squares for x can also be calculated in a different way. Where is sum of x minus x mean square root. So you can also calculate sum of squares using this formula. So you can use either the one written in black or the one in red. So this is computation, uh, computational formula and this is definitional formula to calculate sum of squares. Step 3 is to compute sum of squares for y. So sum of squares y is sum of squares, uh, sum of y squared minus sum of y squared divided by n. And this is again, this is computational formula. You can also calculate sum of squares for y using the definitional formula which is sum of y minus y mean squared. Okay, so once you have the sum of product deviation, sum of squares for x, sum of squares for y, what you can do is you can use those information and compute r. Okay, so let's see how to do it. Okay, as we said that we have six individuals with their work experience scores, work experience values and their job satisfaction which is the y. So what was the step one? Compute the sum of product deviation. So for that you need to have sum of x y minus sum of x sum of y divided by n. Okay, how do we get the sum of x y? So x we have the x values we have the y. So what we need to do is you have to calculate the x y. So x multiplied by y. So 1 multiplied by 1 is equals to 1. 1 multiplied by 3, 3. 3 times 2, 6 and so on. So once you compute the product of x and y, what you need to do is you add all them up. 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 20 plus 24 plus 35, you get the total of x, y which is 89. So this is where we get 89. Minus sum of x times sum of y. So what is sum of x? You total up all the values under the x column. 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 4 plus 6 plus 7. So the total x is 22. So what is the total sum of y? So you add all the values in y column. So sum of y is 20. 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 5 plus 4 plus 5. So once you substitute the information here and you substitute with n. n is number of participants or observation in your data. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's why here is 3. So when you solve these, you get 15.7. So what is step 2? Compute the sum of squares of x. So for that the formula is sum of x squared minus sum of x squared divided by n. So sum of x squared. So how do you get that? So you have to square all the x values. So here is the x's right. So you square them. So 1 squared 1, 1 squared 1, 3 squared you get 9, 4 squared you get 16. 6 squared you get 36, 7, 49. So you add all these values you get 1, 1, 2. And you do the same thing for 
y. Why? 1 squared, here is the 1, right? 1 squared, 1, 3 squared, 2 squared, 5 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. So when you add all these, you get a 80. So once you get these values, you can use them to compute sum of squares and sum of squares for y. So sum of x squared, 1, 1, 2, minus 22, sum of x, sum of x is 22, you square it, divide by 6, number of observation. So when you solve, you get 31.3. Next, when you use compute sum of squares for y, sum of y squared is 80. How do you get 80? From here, y squared, sum of y squared. So you get 80 minus 20 squared. 20 is the sum of y. Then you divide by 6. When you solve it, you get 13.3. So, what will be the next step is to compute R. So, with the information of sum of product, deviation, sum of squares for x, sum of squares for y, you can use all this information, plug in them and you can solve it. So, finally you get your R, um, your Pearson correlation coefficient is 0 0.77. So what do we do next? We have to test for significance. So we want to know if this R is actually having a significant relationship. If this R is showing any significant relationship between two variables. What are the variables? Job, work experience and job satisfaction. So what we do is we transform the R into T score. So the T, the formula is, formula to transform or convert it is, T equals to R times the square root of N minus 2 divided 1 minus R squared. So using the previous example, using the information that we have obtained, R was 0 0.77, we have N equals to 6. The significance will be computed. So R squared is 0 0.77 square, you get 0 0.59. So all this information you plug in, R 0 0.77, 6 sample size minus 2, 1 minus R squared, which is 0 0.59. When you solve this, you get 2.40. Then what do you need to do next? You have to find the T critical to make comparison to the T statistics that you have computed. With alpha 0 0.05, decrease of freedom is N minus 1 because you have only one sample. So what was the N? You have 6, 6 minus 1. So with alpha 0 0.05 degrees of freedom of 5 with 2 tail, the critical value, the value from we get from the table is 2.571. So we compare the T statistics that we calculated to T critical. So what happens? This T statistic is smaller than the T critical. There is no significant relationship found between years of experience and job satisfaction. Okay, so what we did? We started calculating the R. Then from this R, we convert it to a T-score to make comparison with the T-critical in order to identify if there is any significant relationship or not. Since there is no significant relationship, you do not have to report the magnitude okay, and the direction of the relationship. You don't have to say there was a strong or there is a strong positive relationship because we say there is no relationship when we say there is no significant relationship meaning no relationship when there is no relationship you don't have to explain the strength and the direction of the r value that you obtain thank you